Stella, the first question that I have is, what was your experience of Laura Pearls? Who was she for you in your life and how was she? Well, of course, I came through the Fritz, whoops, Fritz Pearls line. I, I trained with Fritz first. And um, uh, so I came to Laura secondly. And mostly I experienced her when she came to San Francisco to do trainings for the Gestalt Institute of San Francisco. I was on the faculty there. And we asked her to come and, and do workshops just with the faculty, just with us. And those were wonderful experiences. That's how I first met Laura was on the West Coast. And at the time I had a lovely Victorian home that I had bought and Elaine Kepner had come from uh, Cleveland and she became a trainer at the fact at the uh, institute and so she was looking for a place to stay and I offered her uh, one of my spare bedrooms which she accepted which was a wonderful experience for me and she was very close friends with Laura and so when Laura came to California to San Francisco to do her workshop she would stay with with me and Elaine. And so that was really lovely because I not only got to work with her in her training, but I also got to live with her. <laughs> and, and she was a trip. She was really different. <laughs> she was really different when she was relaxed and at home and just hanging out with the girls, being Elaine and me, uh, from when she was leading a group. And, and I really got to, to love her. I really got to appreciate her, uh, her wisdom and her humor and her warmth. Um, it was a whole, I, I, I felt it was really different from being in a group with her. Uh, so in terms of uh, a story of her being at my home, one of my favorites, one of my favorite experiences with her was sitting with her at breakfast and uh, having a cup of coffee or tea and toast and whatever we had for breakfast. And, um, and at one point uh, we talked about exercise, doing our exercises. And she said, oh, I do exercises all the time, every day. And she said, I'll show you what I do. And she got down on the floor of my kitchen. Um, she just lay right down there and she put her hands behind her head and she started to do sit-ups, but her head was frightfully close to the refrigerator. And I was only worried that she would bang her head. I, I, I just said, be careful, be careful. <laughs> And she said, I'm okay. And without looking back or anything, and she started doing crunches on my floor. And, uh, and I, I was nervous the whole time. I kept watching that she would be moving back. <laughs> you know? uh, but she never, she never banged her head. She was fine. And um, we continued with our our breakfast with our, our tea and coffee. Okay. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh -huh. um, and uh, a momentous time when she was doing a trainee with, uh, with the Gestalt Institute of San Francisco was when she was leading the group and we were on a break and and suddenly she jumped up, she got a, a phone call, an emergency call, and she jumped up and she said, I have to go. And she ran out the door. And, and we didn't know, we were on a break, so uh, we didn't know what was happening. Fritz was sick, he was in the hospital. 
and he was dying. And seeing her run out like that was just such a clear image of how important Fritz and Laura were to each other. There was absolutely no doubt he was on his deathbed and he called for her to come and she came. I'm getting a chill just thinking about it. She came in a flash. So that was really touching. At, uh, at one point, I, I moved to New York. I needed to get away from San Francisco. I needed to get back to New York. My mother was sick and, and she was in the hospital dying. And I, I didn't have a good relationship with my mother. So I, I felt that I really needed to go to New York. And so I, I picked myself up and I moved to New York. I knew it was temporary. I was only going to be there a year or two. As it turned out, I stayed a year in New York City and then I moved to Woodstock for another year. Um, and so during the time that I was in New York, I went to her groups. I went to uh, the New York Institute and, and did her her groups, she, she led uh, groups, I think every week. Um, and that's how I got to meet a lot of the New York people. How I got to meet Bud Fader, Dan Bloom, uh, Richie Kitzler, uh, among others. And uh, so that was a nice experience for me. It was a whole new crowd of people in, in Gestalt. And I saw how much everybody loved her. She was really loved. Fritz was not loved in the same way. Fritz was appreciated. <laughs> I loved Fritz. I did love Fritz. Um, I, I, once, I once hugged him. I used to call him Fritzilla. As it turned out, he didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't know. He said to me, why do you diminish me? I said, what do you mean I diminish you? And you say, you call me Fritzilla. I said, it's a, it's a term of endearment. I said, but I won't do it again. <laughs> and I, one time, he, you know, he was, he was a tough bird. One time I hugged him and I said, I love you, Fritz. And he said, you love me or you want me to love you? I said, no, I love you. I love you whether you love me or not. And he said, oh, that's nice. You know, he hugged me. Hmm. But he so said, would you say that Laura was able to be loved in a different way? Yes, yes. She, she really had a bond with, with a lot of the, um, uh, well, a lot of the men in the New York Institute. I, I, I noticed that you know, more than anything that, that uh, there was a, between Bud and, and Dan and uh, Richard, they, they really, uh, they were really bonded to her. Um, and, and I enjoyed experiencing her work, which was very different, I thought, from Fritz's. Um, Fritz was a showman. Mm -hmm. Laura was not. Laura was very uh, meticulous and present and, and moment by moment and really staying close to what was happening with the, the person who was working um, and um, much more compassionate, I felt, than, than Fritz. Uh, Fritz believed in frustrating the client. He kept saying, you have to frustrate, you have to frustrate the client. And, um, and that's not what I saw Laura doing. I saw her being um, present and, and supportive and being right, right there moment by moment. Does a particular piece of work 
of hers that you participated in or that you watched come to mind? I don't remember personally mm -hmm. um, working on anything with her. I, I was mostly watching her work, mm -hmm. but I don't remember. And how would you say that the watching and the trainings in San Francisco and in New York um, influenced you in your own work? What was her transcendence with you or her influence, if there was one? Oh, I, I just really appreciated her. I appreciated her as a founder of Gestalt. Um, I appreciated her words of wisdom. I appreciate her, her presence, her essence. She was a lovely lady. Oh, I'll give you one more story. Okay. I think this, this speaks to who she was too. She, um, this was in New York and she had come home from uh, doing a shopping or something in New York and she got came into the um, uh, lobby of her building and a man jumped out with a gun and he said take me to your apartment hmm. and he's he forced I think he forced her into the uh, try to force her into the elevator she fought him back he said take me into your apartment or I'll kill you and she said, go ahead. I'm an old lady anyway, uh, but I will never take you into my apartment. She said, because you will probably kill me anyway. And then, and, and then you will be in my apartment. I'm not gonna take you in there. And, and that was it. The guy got, got out and he ran, he ran off. No. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but to see this, this old lady saying, go ahead, kill me anyway. I'm an old lady. I've had a long, I've had a, a good long life. And he just took off, ran off. Hmm. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite of, of her stories. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And so would you say that there is a, a Laura legacy? Do you oh absolutely that, absolutely what does that feel like or what does that mean well her legacy is how important it is to be creative in in working with uh clients um to use whatever you have at, in your command that um that fritz was a showman and and he was into the theater and so he did psychodrama kind of stuff and that wasn't really where Laura was coming from um, she was much more into uh, using your creativity in the moment with your um, with the person that you're working with your, with your client um, to work in therapy being being present centered and being creative and using whatever you could to expand the client's experience in the moment. And um, I appreciated that wisdom of, of not having to be the star as the therapist, but, mm -hmm. but, the, but the client is the star. I mean, do you have a sense that Fritz or Laura really imagined the transcendence of their approach, of their creations? I think so. I think they both realized that, that what they had created was really valuable and important. And, and you know, a lot of what I'm describing are experiences that I had with Laura and with Fritz in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the end of the 60s for me with Fritz and the 70s uh, with, with Laura. And um, I think they were 
very much uh, aware of how important Gestalt was and would be. I, I don't know that either of them saw the dip that we had uh, in popularity in terms of, um, you know, all of this uh, kind of um, cognitive behavioral stuff and mm -hmm. all that research. A, push back on the a lot of, you know, a lot of that research incidentally has been debunked. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of the efficacy of cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy works best when it's mediated by somatic experiential therapy, <laughs> which is what Gestalt is. Mm -hmm. um, you can't go from understanding stuff to changing stuff unless it's a voluntary behavior. But if it's not a voluntary behavior, if it's something that, that keeps coming up and it's an, an emotional response, uh, you have to work with the emotions. You have to, and if you're working with the emotions, you have to work with the body. So uh, Fritz and Laura knew that. Um, and that's what Gestalt therapists know. You have to work with the body and you have to work in the present moment and it has to be experiential. And, and you have to explore uh, new ways of doing things. And it has to be fun and creative. Uh, the uh, neurobiologists are very much recognizing that now. So I think um, we're due for a, a renaissance in Gestalt. And, and I'm very much devoting myself to that process with my embodied relational sex therapy. You are. Did, did Laura have any views on sex that you'd like to talk about? Is that something you guys discussed um, in your girls' nights in San Francisco? I, well, yeah, we did. I, I think she was open-minded. Mm -hmm. She was open-minded about sex. And um, uh, at the time, I was just um, uh, getting into all the you know, the sexuality work that I began to really uh, develop more of. But um, I was definitely working with a lot of couples and um, yeah, she was uh, thought sex was very important and um, said good things about sex. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciated, I appreciated her. So. so is there is there anything else that you would add about her? I very much appreciate Nancy's book mm -hmm. on um, uh, timeless experience. Uh, I thought that was a really powerful book uh, and uh, described where Laura really contributed to Gestalt therapy. That, that was important to me. Um, and her studies, her work uh, with Lewin uh, and Fritz and Laura's uh, friendship with um, Martin Buber, um, all of that, their influences were really important, I thought, and have contributed so much to Gestalt therapy. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else you would like to add, I would just like to thank you. I mean, you probably didn't imagine you'd be telling the story about her doing sit-ups in your kitchen, you know, 50 years oh, later. Oh, no, I would be telling that story because that's one of my favorite stories of, of Laura. We also at one point went to the movies together and that it was fun sitting next to her at the movie. Um, she, she sat between Elaine and me and... Um, she had comments to make <laughs> while the movie was on. At one point, she was kind of wringing her handbag. I think she got excited. She got into it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Stella. It was really nice to see you, and I appreciate your time. Thank My you. pleasure.
My pleasure. Good being with you as always, Heather. Thank you.